Crusher Impala is back. The potential for perfection here, Freiburger, it may elude you, but I'm very, very aware that this car is good and we can make it perfect. It could be great. Do you remember the last time we had it on an episode? What went wrong? We didn't have the throttle linkage. <laughs> no. Right. We've only ever had this thing at part throttle. So what we're gonna do this time is put a four nine inch in the back, dial in the rear suspension, and fix the throttle opening problem. I hope I've got time to put a shifter in the thing. Yeah. But the big deal, Make the doors open. You have to make the doors open because I'm done with that problem. I'm down with that. It's going to be so violent. Yeah. Can't wait. A super annoying problem with this car is you really can't even get into it because you push the door handle and nothing happens. Why is that? You can see this door has kind of been scrunched right here and it caused a misalignment of the door handle mechanism. There's a pin that goes out when you push the button and it's supposed to hit a flag which works the door latch, but it misses. It submarines right under it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this big crescent and just tweak it back the other way, and that'll put that pin back in alignment where it needs to hit, and if I get the angle just right, then it'll work perfectly. Closes good, it's always closed good, but now it actually opens, so. That's gonna be way more convenient than crawling through the window or having Freiburger slide across the seat. So, fixed. Let's see, that was easy. So there is my 49 pulley, and this is a 58. So this is gonna give me that roughly 5% underdrive. There we go. There we go. All right, I'm gonna tighten all those by hand because you don't want that coming off. Here's the throttle linkage off the bell crank, the gas pedal here, and to clear the blower case, it has this big whoop de doo right there, and that leads to a lot of flex. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to lay this over to the side at an angle so that it'll clear the blower case without this offset. I'm also gonna cut this gooseneck portion off of it because it doesn't need that. Pretty simple fabrication, and it's gonna work great. I'm going to bend this with my bare hands. I'm trying to fill a gap that's three-eighths of an inch. Got the linkage modified in a way that I think it's gonna work, but I'll find out as soon as I put it in, which is gonna be right now. Right there, that's perfection. Okay, Freiburger, you wanna try it now? It's wide open, dude. We're good. Great, it's gonna make way more power. And the better leverage ratio and all the lube and everything, it's way better. It's one bolt and it should all come out. There we go, it is freed. Drag her out of there. We had a problem getting the lower control arm out of the car. The nut for the bolt is buried in a hole up in the frame and I couldn't get any kind of wrench on it. And so I had Steve make this tool right here so that I can fish the socket up in there and get this thing out. There we go. Ka-chow. This new unit here came from a company called Quick Performance, which I've never used before. Now, let me talk about not only the beef, but also the convenience. The big reason why I want a Ford 9-inch is I've got like half a dozen cars that have these axles in them, and the center section drops out with the gears and everything, and so I have a whole bunch of gear sets, a whole bunch of different differentials that I can mix and match and move to different cars at any time I like. So for me, that's a huge benefit of having a Ford 9-inch. The 12 bolt, unfortunately, is nowhere near as easy to change gears on, but there's also elements of beef that you've gotta go with. The 12 bolt has C-clip axles, which means if it breaks an axle right here, 
The axle retention is in there and the wheel and tire comes off the car. The Ford 9 inch has positively retained axles, four bolts out here at the end. So if you break an axle, the wheel and tire stays on the car. And that's actually an NHRA requirement for vehicles with slicks. Also, if you're gonna upgrade a 12 bolt, you need to do things like weld the tubes, sometimes get thicker tubes, and this has all of that stuff already. Also, the guys at Quick Performance recommended a back brace on this thing because they knew that eventually I'm gonna put like a thousand horsepower in this car. Also, I upgraded to a billet 1350 U-joint yoke, which is another thing that would have to be added to the 12 bolt. That 1350 U-joint's just much bigger and beefier. As far as gears, I ordered this with 3.50 to 1 gears. Now remember, I'm not really interested in this being an ultimate drag racing car. I still want it to cruise the highway. I still want it to do burnouts for big distance, and that's why it doesn't have like a 411 in it. It does have 35 spline axles. Remember, a stock Ford 9-inch can be 28 or 31. Once again, quick performance said this car is big heavy makes a lot of power you gotta have a 35 spline axle and i didn't realize that you can actually get an eaton true track for these for 35 spline you didn't used to be able to but that's what i got in there is the true track <laughs> It's been a while, but yes, this is a roadkill garage zip tie moment, mega edition, because I am the zip tie Jedi. So here's the thing. I find it perfectly acceptable to use a giant zip tie to retain brake lines onto the back of a rear end housing. See, here's the thing. If your brake line is on the back of the housing, then when you use a tie down strap for a trailer, you don't have it on the front side and have somebody smash your brake line. So what you wanna do is just break out your giant zip tie and ramrod it and put your brake line right there. And there you go. That is your Roadkill Garage zip tie moment mega edition now we're at the point where we can adjust the suspension here's what my process is going to be set the thing down we will first establish the ride height with the coil over shocks second i will adjust the upper control arms to get the pinion angle where we want it and finally we will measure to make sure that the axle is perfectly centered as adjusted by the pan hard bar and finally my happy place which is the dish mag yes this right here is a US Indie mag wheel. It's a U101. It's a 15 by 8 with 4 inch back spacing. My Hoosier Slick here is a 29 by 10. This is going to like fill out the wheel well and look rad. Here's the other thing a lot of people don't consider, which is, you know, traction with a slick, people always think width. But height actually helps also because when you air it down, you get a longer contact patch. If it's a smaller diameter tire, you get a smaller contact patch. The big deal here is gonna be to find out if it actually fits. Okay, yeah, the tire's even tighter to the outside here and it has more distance to the frame. So it's off a little bit. We're gonna have to jack it up to simulate the ride height and then I think Dulcich is gonna have to do the Dulcich body work that he does. I think you're good. It's not awesome, but it'll be functional. I think it's terrific. I think we can't drive down the street this way, but drag strip will be fine. Before we get to running this thing, let me tell you the specs of the engine so you kind of know what we're dealing with here. It's 498 cubic inches. It's nine to one compression. The cylinder heads are a Brodick race right with a rectangle port at 294 cc's. The camshaft is a Comp Cams hydraulic roller. It's a blower cam off the shelf. It's got 230 degrees of duration at 50 on the intake and 242 on the exhaust. That is a Wyand 871 supercharger and a pair of Holley 900. 150 CFM blower carburetors. This thing by the end of the day should be making five to seven pounds of boost. It's gotta be able to run on 91 octane. 
So we're going to fire it up now, and you'll see it's just going to go through a process. It's not just like strap it down and run it for a number. It's like, woohoo, hold my beer and get out of here. You're going to see that he'll fire it up, set all the idle mixture screws. He's going to check the ignition timing. He's going to make sure my MSD ignition timing retard works. Then we'll sort of go through a process of taking a short run, looking at the air fuel ratios, looking at the boost. And at the end of the day, we'll have a final number. But what I'm looking for is safety and reliability and a good tune-up that's not going to hurt the engine. Chassis dyno tuning is always a process, and so we're not looking for maximum power right now. We're eking up on the tune-up. So our first pull was very rich. We were seeing air-fuel ratios at like high nines and low tens. We were also very conservative on the ignition timing. We had 32 degrees total timing in it, and then we were retarding one degree of timing per pound of boost. We made about five pounds of boost, and so we were only running about 27 degrees of total ignition timing. What we're going to do now is go ahead and crank up that timing, run 32 degrees at wide open. And also Ish noticed that it was backfiring when he whacked it to wide open throttle, so he just threw a couple squirters in the carburetors so that he'd get more pump shot to cover up sort of a flat spot there so that it won't backfire. So here we go again. Five hundred and thirty horsepower at the rear tire, which is like fifty more than we were making when we rolled in here tonight. It's substantially better. We can honestly say the Crusher Impala is making more power than it ever has. Yeah. <laughs> First run of the day. Now, we really have no idea what to expect. It's a whole different combination on the suspension. It's a lot tighter than it used to be. So whether it's going to hook up or just break the tires loose, I don't know. Moving into the staging area, remember, the reaction time does not count at all in the ET. So he's just going to take his time on the launch. It's staged, counting down. Okay, the new meme is going to be roadkill garage and column shifters. For some reason, this thing worked perfectly up till now, and now I can't get the thing to shift right. Same problem as the crop duster. Pretty embarrassing. It just ran the 1127 just laying on the rev limiter for who knows how much. So that's the fastest the car has gone by over half a second. Okay, we've got a definite problem here on the 1-2 shift. Okay, that I don't understand. I left it in drive and it hit the rev limiter. Is it dropping fluid on the track right uh, now? You started leaking, you're starting to drop some water. Do you have the fans off? No, they're on. Yeah. Right? Is any of this getting on the track? Yeah, we are. When it first did it, I thought it was oil out of the breathers. But do you want to pop the hood and see if it's overflowing or anything? Oh, no, the battery is... Uh... Oh, the battery. The ba that's, that's battery acid. Oh, how'd that happen? I don't know. Look at that hole in the battery right there. It must have leaned back into the alternator. What happened to the hold down? The hold down failed, and it fell into the alternator. That's what that is. Yeah. 
Here's a new kind of failure I've never had before. Thank you very much. The uh, homemade battery hold down completely failed. The battery leaned back into the alternator and it sprayed battery acid all over the engine, all over the windshield, all over the track. It's pretty ungood. Ah, that is so bad. Took all the paint off the front of the engine already. <laughs> ah, it's caustic too. Wow, this battery ass is gonna etch every bit of aluminum under here. That's all right, I got it. I'm surprised it hasn't here. taken the anodizing off my Morosa valve covers. But look how it took all the paint off the front of the heads on this thing right there. That was bad. Well, as I predicted, there's your roadkill ending for you. Good news, this thing's half a second quicker than it ever has been, and it did that on the rev limiter for like a day and a half. It did. Yeah. But the good news is, look at those Moroso gold valve covers. It didn't hurt those. It just like etched yeah. everything else in sight, but the valve covers are intact. So here's what I'm thinking. What? Fix the transmission. Right. Floor shifter, mm -hmm. power steering. Right. And then another episode of Roadkill Road Garage. Garage.